OK, so um, before we get into uh, Saturday's match, Jan, we, yeah. I asked you about a question and said uh, who would be right now, and, and bearing in mind, uh, I did say the fact that Kevin De Bruyne, I'm not going to include because he's not played this season. So yeah. if you had to take a team sort of from this season so far, uh, from Chelsea and City, who mm. would be your combined starting eleven? So. Okay. Go well, ahead. I think you told me about De Bruyne because uh, he obviously instinctively went in. So, it, okay. So, I'm going to start at the back. Um, and this is my, my only bias thing in here is is I said I put Kepper slash Edison. Now, Cheat. Cheating. <laughs> yeah, because, because, well, okay. Because it's a city channel, I'll say Edison. But I, I want to say. No, no, no. You can go. No, 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 no. Yeah, let's, just, let's, I, basically, Edison is obviously a an excellent keeper and he's just what the doctor ordered but for me for what Kep has done we thought he's been assaulted more than the City uh, side obviously for obvious reasons because you're settled and you've got a good defence and you're all versed and stuff but Kep has made some great instinctive saves he's uh, they're both they're both quite similar in terms of great shot stoppers and great football players and distributions. Uh, I mean, Real Madrid wanted to buy Kepa before they, you know, they bought that big nose snake. Um, so, <laughs> so anyway, um, Kepa's really good. He had this like one moment where he did like, he ran out and did a clearance volley pass and, you know, little things like that. So I think they're very similar keepers, but just in watching this season, like Kevin De Bruyne isn't playing this season, watching this season, some of the stuff he's executed, I feel like he's had to do more. Um, I don't think he's better. Uh, but because if we're going to go on that sort of this season kind of vibe, I'll say Kepa. Okay, give you that. Um, Right back, Carl Walker, all day. Um, I'll have a centre-back pairing of Laporte. Now, I was thinking John Stones, but I've put in Rudiger just because he is a a good footballer, but he's, him and Laporte both are strong and they're both like quite technical. And I, I see... John Stones, he could play for me in midfield a lot of the time. And I know he's been excellent for England, this, that, and the other. But when I look at like the pairing, potential pairing of Laporte and Rudiger, they're, they're both like early 20s. They're both like quite, you know, le- leader esque style. And, you know, Rudy's very, very fast and he could break up and Laporte could tuck in. And I think that would make an excellent pairing. I've put a left back now. Uh, I put Alonso because I think Mendy's injured anyway, right? Um, I think the. Them two and maybe Robertson are the best best in the league. All for different reasons, actually. Um, very different attributes. Like Alonso's obviously got an amazing left foot. He can like score volleys. He, he can be a fox in the box. He can score headers, and he's like a striker's poacher sometimes. So, but it would it would have to depend on him not tracking back. But I think those offensive attributes in this combined team would, would I'd go with Alonso. Um, Again, so we're going to go 4 3 3. I put Jorginho over Fernandinho. Fernandinho is obviously more versed in the Premier League. He's a bit more canny. He's a bit more canny. But I, um, if this was a team I wanted to move forwards, Jorginho is younger. Um, and in this side, if I, I, never, I, never, I never said 2019 20 season, I said. Yeah. <laughs> I'm changing my story as it goes. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. You go ahead. No, 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 no. Go on. Keep, keep I'm, still, I'm still going. I'm still going. Okay, so I'm George, Jorginho because a lot... Uh, Fernandinho, he, he sees the ball less than City... Uh, sorry, um, at City than Jorginho because of the way you play again. I'm, I'm going to maintain this through the way way we sort of play here. A lot, I'd, it, he'd be more of an engine register, whereas um, he'd be relied on more for quick passes all the time which obviously is his game in its entirety so in this team i'd go for Jorginho. um flanked by uh, originally i had de bruyne and bernardo because i just love bernardo silver but um so i'd have bernardo on the right but because i can't have de bruyne i would put kovacic in because in this team there's going to be goals and you can afford with the quality he has on the ball like he's at eden hazard in midfield um, you could definitely just have Kovacic in there. And, you know, b- already like, Bernardo can score goals. Fair enough, Kovacic and Jorginho, not so much. But out of this front three, you can uh, you can afford to have um, a, a very cultured Galactico dribbler in Kovacic there. So the front three I'd have, I'm uh, a big fan of Sane, but for to, to shine in this team, it's got to be Eden Hazard. Um, 
from my I think the best strike the best strike in the Premier League last few years has been Aguero. Um and then on fire Sterling on the right. <laughs> so you know so um what's that? You know Three, four, yeah, so that's four. a four, three. so that, that team is beating anyone, do you know what I mean? How about you, mate? Yeah. Lots of decent team. Yeah. Lots of good team. Obviously, I'm going to debate a couple of those positions. Yeah. Um, and this is going to be my combined 11. <clears throat> and what I did do was I, I did mull over a couple of positions, and it was very difficult on a couple yeah. of them. Certain. There's, there's one in particular, two in particular, I definitely it's agree. Just be 10 City players featuring Eden Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty close. Uh, <laughs> no. If, so if we start off with my team, uh, my team was um, I had to go for Edison uh, because yeah, cer- certainly within this team that I'm playing mm. uh, because uh, I just think I mean just last night's game against Watford I mean he starts so many things uh, he's incredible he's unflappable uh, and mm. never never panics now I know some will say. De Gea is the best goalkeeper in the Premier League, possibly the world. I disagree. He's the best shot stopper. He's, the best, he's, the, best, he's the best shot stopper when they're hit straight at him. I totally agree. Yeah. I don't. Uh, but for what he brings to the United team, his he, kicking is absolutely nowhere near yeah. Edison. Like, Edison of course, yeah. For and me, Alisson's Allison, kicking is nowhere near Edison's. Nowhere near it. Mm. So for me, Edison goes straight into the yeah, team. I'd concede that, yeah. But, it, you know, I agree with what you're saying about Kepper, but it, Edison's my keeper. Uh, right back, I agree, Walker. Um, I don't think there's a better right back in the in the Premier League. Um, no. Getting us out of trouble as well with his pace. Not 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 so much for what he does going forward and crosses, Wrong but he, he's intelligent. He's really been intelligent. Mm. He's cutting inside and things like that. So I'll go for Walker. Um, yeah, Rudiger. Rudiger was one I really, really did. I was like, um and an ari, um and an ari. The only reason I put Stones and Laporte together is because of the way they played this season. Beat them together, yeah, yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. So I, if I had to, if you said to me, no, you've got to separate them, I would have had Rudiger every day of the week because I think he's been an amazing player uh, this yeah, season. Yeah, really, yeah. really good. And, and, and would be a City player, without a shadow of a doubt. But I just couldn't separate the partnership of Stones. No, I understand and... that, yeah, yeah, yeah. My left back, same as you. Um, mm-hmm. I could have picked Mendy. Uh, Mendy's been brilliant in fits and starts when he plays, yeah. when he's fit and everything out. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, defensively, he's been OK. He's not been brilliant. But, I mean, we've, he's not been under a lot of pressure. But I think Alonso's a wonderful player. So, um, even though... Delph, in, Delph has been an amazing sort of like fullback, you know, going into that position. But it's I think Alonso is brilliant. He's been yeah. absolutely brilliant for us. Unbelievable. Well, he had an excellent game in that midfield England. Superb. Yeah. Uh, but I had to pick out of a natural left back. I would I would go for Alonso. Yeah. So Alonso's in my team. Um I, sorry, it's Fernandinho. Fernandinho. I know if, it, maybe if you're going for future. Jorginho. Yeah, could, yeah, yeah. Could, that, I get that. Yeah, could, that's could, be the player, could be the player for future. Maybe we missed out on him and yeah. we might regret that. Well, if, if we, we if we more like Frankie De Jong, if we don't go for someone yeah. like that, we might have regret uh, yeah. not really going out for for Jorginho. But Fernandinho right. is the heartbeat. He, he's just so intelligent. Yes, he might not be as I don't know, as quick possibly, uh, but he is. He, he just reads. His, his, his intelligence is immense. It's Absolutely. Cool to go against the experience at yeah. the moment. In that yeah, city, I'd, right? I'd, I'd have to go for it, and I'm not doing that from a biased point of view. I'm just no, thinking, I understand in that. This team, he would make. He makes us tick. He's the mm-hmm. heartbeat. Now, you've got Eden Hazard in your team. I've got Eden Hazard. Wonderful, wonderful. And if 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 any City fan said Eden Hazard isn't in this Man City team, I'm sorry. You, I disagree with you because he has to be in it one way or the other. Mm. But as good as Bernardo Silva's been this year, I can't believe that this team does not have David Silva in it. Ugh. The guy is he's, in. He's gone up a level this season as well. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, if, and, and to give me a choice of possibly one of our best players this season in Bernardo Silva... But then not having David Silver, I could not have not have that. Can, David can Silver. I just pause you for one second and just say yeah. the reason the reason why I've done a lot of these things is I I've I've admitted to you I got stuck in between thinking of 
how I'd want this team to go this season. Like, yeah, oh, Dav- oh, Davis yeah. Silva, yeah. everyone thinks he might be on the decline, but he's done amazing stuff this season. He's- but then you look at Bernardo Silva and you think, God, what a player. I'd want him in my team. And that's why I'm saying sort of yeah. towards the Jorginhos yeah. and Bernardo Silvas. Absolutely. I mean, you could you could swap him around and you could take, you could argue taking Sane out of the team and putting David Silva on the left or Hazard on the left and playing Bernardo and David Silva. I mean, yeah. there are so many variants, but I, I could not have Hazard in the team. Yeah. In the not in the team, he had to be in the team. So sure. I, I've gone for Fernando uh, Fernandinho sitting. I've gone for Hazard slightly ahead on the left. Bernardo uh, David Silva on the right. Yeah. Uh, so and then, the playmaker uh, from Hazard. Yeah. And then I've agreed with your front three. I've gone, but I've gone for Sane, Aguero, and Sterling. I mean, Aguero, it's a travesty. He's never been in the Premier League team of the year. I mean, it's just an absolute yeah. joke. Um, but I, I listened to some ex-pros talking about it, and they're saying, you know, there is tactical voting, and you do get it in February, and it just happens so. The last few years, Aguero's always been injured at that period of time, and it's it does influence the way you vote, but. Even they said for him not to have been in the Premier League team of the year is a travesty. So Aguero for me, every day of the week. Sterling has been unbelievable. I mean, he came on in He's that second half in the country at the moment. Oh, unbelievable! I mean, he came on. We played. We were at Bournemouth at, 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 on Saturday, and at half time we were in the stands going, "Oh, you know, we're not really ticking." And he came oh, out and scored, didn't he? Came out like a man. He came out and he just literally went, right, we need to pick this up. And he, he, he was the one that, bang, gave us the energy, the spark, and suddenly, you know, we ran away with it. Mm-hmm. And Sane, still young, so young and so raw, still frustrates you as as in, as, as much as you, he just in, makes you go, oh, my God, how does he do that? Um, and it can only get better. And he's just, I can't imagine being a right-back or a right-centre-back and having him anywhere near you think you look at it just going how do I defend against him because he can go either side and he's so fast yeah so that be that would be my that would be my that would be my 11 and it'd be a difficult one uh, and there were plenty of players that did on an hour about but you could probably make a few combinations of the co- he, oh, loads, loads. loads yeah at the moment we'd pro- both probably be in agreement that the majority of the team would be City players, but you could make choppers and changes for different purposes and different yeah. approaches. And oh, yeah. you'd probably see a bit of both in the, in, in both lineups. So, um, I <laughs> guess, the weekend. Us, yeah, I was going to say this leads us on nicely to, uh, to the, the bit that I've been dreading. Or, or, or video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the, you know, this is going to be like deja vu to the last time we spoke, but, um, I mean, you know, I know we got a, a, a Fulham look a lot better, and we beat him two 0 or something. But it's just not. We just don't have the co- cohesion. We, we're not. We're not together enough. I mean, for it really depends if 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 the sort of chemistry between Louise and Alonso is gone again, and we don't have that midfielder dropping off. Your you know Sterling's just going to come in and have a party, um, or who, you know if he's playing on that side. Uh, I think the one thing about this game is last season, Conte just said, look, they're way too good. We're going to completely Jose Mourinho this one and we're going to lock down and we lost 1-0 and there was points to the game. It was kind of like surreal at points. There's that, there was that gift going uh, around. Yeah. yeah, there was that gift going around where the City Massive. players were passing around Sesk and he was just going... It was, it was, a, it was surreal. Um, was, uh, I mean, even as a City fan watching it, we were like, Going on, yeah. it was like nobody engaged. Everybody was just sort of stood there. Uh, it was just going. Is anybody going to tackle us? Is anybody? Yeah, it was a strange was, game. I tell you something, Andy. That was the day because throughout the, I mean, there was a point that season we were second behind City. Anyway, there was a big, there was a big drop off, and that was like the turn of the year, I think, as well. There was a big drop off, but um, what that day because. Everyone always did the Antonio chance, but that day a lot of people stopped chanting Antonio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wasn't surprised because it, no. it had a lot of negative press, and, yeah. and City fans were like, "It was just it was it wasn't like bending over, but it was like an ultimate what it was damage that it was the champions doing damage limitation, and that was just not on." Yeah. Um, so. On the flip side of that, sorry, won't do that. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna, he will go toe to toe with Guardiola. 
And, you know, for better or for worse, that is commendable, you know. Yeah. It, it, could, it could mean, for me, the best possible outcome. And this isn't denigrating Chelsea. This is just being a bit sort of realistic. I mean, I mean, if Chelsea beat City, it would make headlines. It, yeah, just, course, it, just, it will because yeah. of how well you guys are doing and how... You know, less so if like if if Liverpool did or even Spurs did. You know, they it would be less headlines because of Sari coming in or whatever. So it would make headlines. But I think the best sort of for me, I'd be incredibly happy with say a two-two in a great game. And you know, if we lose by one goal margin, no one, no Chelsea fans going to walk away and think, oh, we'll probably think, yeah, you know, we gave them a game and we're developing. Um, I think you know that would be good. But I think it, the positive, the positive. Um, perspective would be a score draw and then the negative would be we get slapped about and there could be a big a big score line and that could that could happen because we we will we won't try and frustrate city you guys we won't try and frustrate you so look we're going to try and get the ball and and, oh, and we're going to afford you spaces we're going to afford david silver bernardo silver whoever's playing fernandinho to like see these intelligent passes because we're going to try and play our game and that's great for the league for the spectacle and stuff but it, it could it's a nervous approach for a Chelsea fan. So I think the way I see it happening is we'll both try and play our game, probably put two, four, three, three, four formations. There'll be loads of little cuddles and kisses on the touchline between Sari and Pep. And then, um, and hopefully it's a contest. That's all I can really hope for. Um, I mean, last time I remember you spoke, you know, Chelsea had a bit of a chance, but how, how do you feel about it this time around? Um, I, I'm I'm city itis all over. I'm I, I'm not one of these that go. Oh yeah, we're gonna do this. I, I think it's gonna be. A, I think I, I, yeah. I noticed I, there was a stat in there that we we'd only lost one game out of thirty eight outside of London against London teams, which is pretty impressive. You know when you think of mm. Arsenal. Chelsea, Spurs, everything else. I mean, we like, yeah, even like West Ham you know, might have a good day and whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so. Um, every time we've gone to London in, against the big teams, you know, the likes of Spurs and the likes of Arsenal and Chelsea, I've always thought, is this going to be the, is this going to be the one? And yet we've just turned up and up to our game for some yeah. reason. So will we do that on Saturday? Who knows? Uh, I think it will definitely be an entertaining game uh, without a shadow of a doubt. One, one reason, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever happens. Mm. I'm just, I'm just hoping when you talked earlier about, uh, Jorginho staying in his in his role and Kante playing on the right. I, I hope that still happens on Saturday because my one concern would be Kante reverse to the middle and actually trying to stop Fernandinho doing his thing. Going after and yeah. it, if, if he does, mm. that could be a problem because Fernandinho is such a key player. He really is. I mean, he, not not only for his passes around the centre circle. You watch Edison. Edison's mm. always looking for Fernandinho as the out ball. Mm. And Fernandinho invariably, eight, 8 out of 10, gets the ball in a load of space, 20 yards from the centre circle, and starts... And every... he's, two moves, he's two moves ahead. And I don't, I don't think Jorginho will follow him that far forward. No, no. So, no. so if, you, if you're not no. watching out for that, I, I think... Um, well, they play similar uh, roles. In, in... Yeah. Yeah, so, so, um, so I mean, it'd be interesting. That's going to be my interest is your midfield and what is Sare going to do? Because Pep won't change, and we no. know Sare potentially is going to be stubborn. But will Sare sort of look at it and go, "We've got to stop this. We've got to stop this control immediately mm -hmm. from the keeper to the into the no. midfield. We've got to stop that because if we don't, attacks can build very well, quickly well, hey, with, exactly with, with the pace of Sterling, mm -hmm. Sane, Aguero." Now, whether Aguero will play, I doubt it. I don't think he'll play. Uh, yeah. I think it'll be Jesus. I think they won't risk it. He was in the red. Um, at oh, the you should have told me for my fantasy football. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, I interviewed Jonathan Northcroft on uh, Saturday night after the game uh, mm. for the channel, and uh, he said he'd just been speaking to the coach's staff, and they said that Aguero was in the red. That's why he was rested. But then I... trained, trained on Monday... Uh, and and I felt a tight abductor muscle. It's like, well, if he's in the red, why? He should surely have four to six days rest. Why? Yeah. So I, they're saying it could be a week, it could be two. So. Oh, we'll see. If, I, he'll magically recover and score. Uh, well, 
Because <laughs> Gabby's doing everything but scoring yeah. goals. I mean, he's working so hard for the team, but not scoring. But mm. I always feel much more confident that if Aguero's playing. Oh, uh, so, yeah. I think I think it's going to be a difficult game. I think it's going to be an entertaining game. Um, and I do think it'll all come down to what Sari picks in that midfield battle. And if, if, if he sticks with Jorginho, we can say on the right, mm. I think I'll be... Well, he will, he will. He I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be going into... What a bit more confident. I think we'll he's, he that. said that. He said he won't. He won't compromise that role. He says that role is Jorginho, and if Jorginho can't play because we've got so many games, it will be Fabregas. He said they are the players that, that play that. But so n- none of them, you know, well Jorginho can tackle, but Cesc can't tackle. Cesc yeah. can't run. Cesc is again. They're both the maestro, like Fernandinho, Regista. Yeah. But Fernandinho is more of an all-rounder. He can put a tackle in and do this and that. You know. And but, he's quick and he can score. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, he's, he's a goal for it as well. So the yeah. one, the one for, for Chelsea to get a result, and if that's whether you turn to score, draw, or you know against the bookies, we get a win. It, it's gonna need like an inspired Eden Hazard performance, you know, when he like does these link ups, runs. It's gonna need one of his like little like magician like moments. If it's just the sort of system trying to continue to progress, it, it won't be enough against the current city side. But um, do, do you want to do a school prediction, Andy? Oh, I'm rubbish at. Imagine you saying that just lately, except for last night. I've actually been all right. Normally, I'm terrible at school right. predictions. Um, I'll go for a two-one City win. A very tight game, entertaining game. If Aguero doesn't play, probably City's missed four or five good opportunities. And Chelsea have done what Watford did last night and come back at us and yeah. make it very nervy. Um, so I'll go. T- I'll go two one. I'll go two one City. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to be. This is positive for me. I'm going to go two all, and I'll be very happy with that. Uh, I, I won't be, but I mean, uh, well, yeah, because of the current. Yeah, you've got to remember Liverpool are only two points if they win tonight. Are only two yeah. points. I just on a quick. I don't think Liverpool, although like I, I commend them for sorting out a lot of their problems, and they have brought, like we said earlier in this video, pragmatism, which is good. I still have I'm yet to be convinced if they can do it for the long run. Well, that's that's what we'll see. I think we've mm. we've we've got such an in depth squad and things like that. And, We've got to remember we've got Kevin De Bruyne coming back in the next week, so he won't be fit for the weekend. But I think uh, he could be on the bench. Could be on the bench, but I yeah. think they'll 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 give him the time that's needed. And yeah, you don't want to throw him in against Chelsea, probably. I mean, I mean, if if, if I said to you, how much would Kevin De Bruyne be on the market right now if if he went up for sale tomorrow? Mm. You would say what, hundred hundred and fifty million? Yeah, and the rest. It, that, well, it depends it, how long he's. If Coutinho is 146 million, how, how much will Kevin De Bruyne go? Yeah, like? I mean it's down to contract, right. isn't it? If, if he's got three years on his plus on his contract, yeah. Then, then yeah, name name your price for a cultured midfielder. Um, yeah, well, they, so yeah. That, that, that's the type of player we've got coming back in the mm. future. So you know, it, it only bodes well. Uh, it only bodes well for us in the future. So yeah, but Saturday, I mean, any game against Chelsea, I always I've always been. They have, there's not been real sort of runaway. Victories. It's not been you know five yeah. nils, four ones, four nils, and not 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 for a while. I mean, it's been you know close closeish games to yeah. one, a one nil, you know. Um, so I, I can only see the same. I think it'll be a tight game. Um, hopefully, well, hope entertaining. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, let's just hope for an entertaining yeah. game then, mate. Cool. Anyway, so listen, uh, I think it's time to wrap this up. We've been on God knows how long, and over an yeah. hour, uh, but. Um, Listen, don't forget to uh, go over and check out Jan. Give us, get, tell everybody, all the, the, the watchers, uh, okay. your podcast. Well, brilliant. Thanks. Thank you for having me on again, Andy. It's been a pleasure. I love talking to you about football. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great fun. If you guys enjoy listening to me talk about football, generally it's Chelsea, but I do have opinions on the league football and world football. So I do host a podcast called the Yannick on Chelsea podcast, which hopefully Andy will link in the description. Definitely. <laughs> and and yeah, 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 brilliant. And hit me up on Twitter at Chelsea Yannick, Y-A-N-N-I-C-K. And I'm always uh, interested in chatting about football and banter and all that sort of luck. Brilliant. Cool. Well, listen, uh, we'll chat uh, no doubt during or after the game. We'll certainly catch yeah, up on I'm Twitter. Sure we <laughs> okay. 
Well, listen, I want to say a massive thank you to Jan. He's, he's always a pleasure. He's brilliant to listen to, um, great to interact with. He's got a great knowledge of football in general, not just Chelsea. So go over and give him a shout-out, guys. Thank okay, you. take care, Jan. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye.